welcome and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the channel uh today we are going to be looking at a few tips and tricks for pal world now a friend and i bought the game and we played and i've sunk almost 40 hours into it uh this is his world uh that he transferred to me because we were playing on his session uh i'll be doing most of it there but for the first tip and tricks we're not even going to go into a world it's going to go from creating a new world uh when you create your initial world it's going to ask you to name your world you're going to go ahead and confirm and then you will have a few options over here pertaining to whether you want multiplayer or uh, what difficulty you want uh for the most part normal is nice however in the custom settings uh in custom settings you can uh change some things you can change these at any time so if you already have a world and you see something that you would like to change you can go ahead and do that uh if we quickly run through custom settings uh most of these are nice but you can change them as you want although i would leave a lot of them default uh day and night speed basically runs uh from or it takes it's how long a day and night takes to pass so the higher the value the quicker or the yeah the higher the value the quicker it passes so if you want a bit shorter day night times you can always lower this to 0.5 uh you can't lower them to uh zero so you can't only have um daytime however you could raise night to five and day to 0.1 if you would wish to uh, although that's going to be up to you xp rates i find i found xp rates to be relatively well balanced if you do push it up it's going you're going to level incredibly quickly but hey if that is what you wish you can capture rate this seemed a bit low especially on higher levels we'll get to that uh when we when i talk about that in later in the video but yeah later levels you have like a 0.2 percent chance to capture some of the bigger bosses with uh some the most optimal of circumstances so i i haven't really played around with this but doubling it theoretically would give you four percent so i don't even know if that would be enough but you're gonna have to determine that uh for yourself pal appearance rate now this is just how many pals appear uh boosting this to two times uh is going to have bosses spawn in is going to double all spawns so the world bosses are going to spawn into uh, same if you move it to three world bosses are then going to spawn in three it also does say note that this does affect your game performance so keep that in mind if you do uh, you could boost it to 0.9 that leaves bosses uh single or world bosses as single spawns but that packs of pals are going to be more over uh than not uh damage multipliers of pals and damage to pals self-explanatory same with the hunger depletion stamina depletion all were relatively fine you could reduce your stamina de uh, depletion rate if you wish uh, auto regeneration is when they are in your inventory regenerating and then this is pal sleeping health regeneration uh, is also connected to regeneration in pal box the sleeping health regeneration is also if you have a pal in your inventory and you go to bed so if you have a pal that's very low health you go to bed he'll heal up uh damaged this these are just the same things with players instead of that uh damage to structures uh this is going to be if you have um raids enabled uh structure deterioration structures deteriorate over time honestly i remove this because I can't be bothered to run around fixing fixing everything uh, continuously. Uh, maximum number of dropped items in the world. That's going to be essentially how many stacks of things are. So uh, if you have a lower qual uh, quality PC, you could lower this to a thousand. I did. That improved my performance by a lot. Um, the a number of dropped items don't doesn't mean the number of items in a stack. So if you drop a stack of, say, 2000 wood the stack is seen as one entity i believe so um 
lowering this to a thousand isn't going to affect you that much. Uh, gatherable objects. The rate at which you gather is determined by per hit. So every time you hit something, you gather materials. So the number of it the gatherable items multiplier means how many items you get per hit. Uh, the object health for gatherables is how much, how many times you can hit a rock. So increasing either of these indirectly increases the quantity of resources you gain. Uh, what I did was I boosted my gatherable items to two, uh, and then I lowered the object health to five. Essentially, this is still the same thing. I just mine a lot quicker. Uh, that's it. Respawn interval, uh, lower means it respawns faster, higher means your rocks and trees will respawn slower. Uh, dropped item multiplier, that is if you are killing a pal or capturing a pal, um, it's the wool and stuff that they drop. Time to incubate eggs, I reduced that to zero because, yeah, I don't see the point of having, I mean, you can probably have it hatch if you want it a bit more difficult, but, mm. That's, that all depends. Uh, raid events. That's NPCs and NPC pals will raid your base periodically. I'm not quite sure as to what the trigger is. I think if you were to lower your, um, your day-night speed, because I don't think they'll invade... I think they invade over a period of uh, days instead of just a, pe a flat period of time. So lowering this to say 0.5 and 0.5, extending your days will give you a bit more time to prepare if you care about raids. Uh, if you don't, just go ahead and turn it off. The resources you get from raids are useful, but also negligible at best. Uh, drop penalty, I just drop all items, drop all items except the stuff that you have equipped, and then just don't drop, and finally is drop everything you have in your inventory. That's pals, items, it's everything. Guilds you're probably not going to worry about if you're playing on a single player world, or if you have you and four friends are jumping together. This is more server settings. Uh, but yeah, that's the final thing in the settings part. Once you're complete with your settings, you can hit OK. We'll finish setting up the world. Oh, it'll take a little bit to load, and then you will load into your character creator. There we go. Uh, so character creator, you're going to be able to change your name. Now, if you are playing on Xbox, I don't think this has been fixed yet, but if you're playing on Game Pass, you are on a lower version. Xbox Game Pass version is uh, version 1. Steam's version is 1.2. So Xbox has a lot of features that isn't... Um, it, or Steam has a lot of features that isn't in Xbox. Mainly naming your character and... Um, exit button. And there's some things that don't quite uh, work the same. Uh, on Xbox, you may drop ancient parts from uh, NPCs that you kill. There's a lot of different things. So if you're playing on Xbox, this might not... Everything in the video might not pertain, so just experiment around a bit. Anyway, you're going to create your character. I'm not going to put any effort into this because I already have a world set up. I just wanted to show one thing. Now, when you spawn in, the problem is you always spawn here. Or it might not be a problem. It depends on if you've watched a lot of YouTubers and you might want to spawn on a different location. You can do so by hitting escape, hitting respawn. This does kill you, and you're going to have to wait for the 5 second respawn timer, but it's not the biggest problem, uh, since you're just starting out. Then you can hit respawn. Now, uh, by default, you start up here. Uh, this is your main, so this is the starting point where uh, we spawn. Then we have a bit of a harder spawn, as you can see, pal population is less. Uh, over here, there's even less, and up here is probably the hardest is the hard zone you could say uh but yeah that's 
pretty much all there is to uh, your respawning and your settings. Now uh, let's hop over to the let's hop over to my main world and we can actually start talking about base building. I'll catch you guys there. Okay, so this is my main world, and the first thing you're going to be really tasked to do is building a base. Now, in building a base you are going to be required to place down a PAL box and this is going to be around where your base is built around, basically. As you level your, your PAL box, you will be able to, at a later date, build uh, three bases in total. I recommend building uh, one base for food, specifically, and one base for metal, specifically. I'll show you both of those now. Uh, but... <clears throat> The big thing is the location of, of your base is going to be determined by honestly whether or not you have uh, raids enabled or not. Uh, on this world, we did have raids enabled, then we disabled them. I'll explain that now. But as you can see, all three of my bases are relatively close to each other. Uh, you could spread them out a bit. Uh, this was my first base, this was my second base. We did not have a food base. I set up the food base uh, specifically for uh, the video's purposes. Uh, and because it's actually quite recommended. Um, what I mean by base location is mainly... Hmm, let's go. What I mean by base location and how you need to pick it and why raids matter is the amount of entries into your base is going to matter in the beginning because at later times uh, flying flying raids do happen so the location of your base matters now as a rule the raids always spawn on a road so this road down there it'll all almost always appear here and they'll always follow the road until they enter your uh, your PAL box, uh, your PAL box's bubble. So, in defenses, you have an option for walls. Now, as you can see over here, I built the walls. The defensive walls don't actually need to be inside of your circle, uh, of your PAL circle. You just need to you can just build them anywhere however the problem with building this is uh okay i don't have the defense over here. wait i can't build it it's in my inventory um so the problem with building a wall on the outside of your thing is if you were to uh if you were to go ahead and try and build defenses you'll realize that defenses okay my refined materials are on the other base but you'll realize that your defenses, such as the crossbow, the turret, and the missile launcher, needs to be placed in the circle, because they need pals to be manned. So, in this case, if I was to move the pal box over a bit, so that it um, just edges here, I could place missile launchers there, and then as the raiders would run up, they'd get uh, dealt with as such. The other thing, now that's your one option for defense your other option for defense is having your base pals defend for you now this is going to be dependent on the base the type of pals you have and their level because as they're in here they're not going to be leveling anymore so if you want your base pals to defend for you i would recommend um i would recommend taking them maybe taking them out as you level up to level them up as well Reason being, and this is where we needed to disable raiding on our server, is I would be at base farming uh, more in the terms of how my playstyle is. So I'd be, I'd go out, level it once or twice, and build better armor, better gear, and so on and so forth. My friend, on the other hand, was on basic leather gear, and he just went out on a taming spree, and... A level 41 raid happened. I was in my 30s, my level 30s, and um, I got destroyed because I wasn't high enough level, and he got destroyed because he was completely undergeared. 
So there is a very big balance if you're if you're actually playing with raids, uh, as to leveling, building defenses, leveling your, uh, and then leveling your uh, your base creatures, uh, or your base pals. That's the first option. The second option is to just. If a raid happens, quickly run down to your pal box and cycle out your um, your party pals, so the pals you have in your party mainly, uh, into your pal box so that they can defend because your party pals are mainly always going to be high enough level or higher level uh, than you. Uh, that is... And yeah, that's... Oh yes. Then another thing... That you can't build outside. Now I don't have a gate. So I'm not sure how a raid would happen here. But the other option you have in raiding. Is if we go to technology. You will see as you scroll down. Uh, you have the alarm bell. Now the alarm bell just sets your pals in your base. To focusing on work or focusing on fighting. So if there's a raid appearing and you have a bell. Just ring it once and you will end up. Go ahead, ring it once, and you'll end up, uh, yeah, it'll end up switching them between working and fighting, so just cycle between them. Traps are another thing uh, that you have. Now, there's many different traps. As you level, you have your hanging trap, and then uh, lower, you have, you end up going into, there's bear traps, and then there's landmines, and so on and so forth. Uh, so since we know that they, the raiders do walk in the path, you can always just place them here. Uh, problem being with that is other pals can activate it as well. Give me one second, I just need to manage something. I'll be back now. Sorry, I live on a farm and there was a chicken in my, roof, in my room. And I do also have a house chicken, but that was not the house chicken. Regardless, uh, so as I was saying... You have landmines and stuff, however, other creatures can also activate those traps. So keep that in mind. Uh, you might, if you want to, as there's a, a type of, as you can build the walls and the gate outside, you could probably build a, kill a type of kill box. So build uh, a gate and then walls on either side and another gate that you can close and build your traps on the inside. And then if a raid happens, you just open the outside gate so that they run through into the traps and yeah, so so forth. Uh, that could also help you if you have uh, a fire breather or something with, say, ice missile, and then you can just uh, deal with them that way. <clears throat> uh, as you can see, my structures there were just damaged. Uh, if you ever do damage your structures in your technology tree, you can build a repair kit. Repair kits are relatively inexpensive, uh, especially late game. They're incredibly inexpensive. Uh, you can just go ahead and create a repair kit and it, you'll see if it is damaged. It'll just say, I have a repair kit on me, but um, it's not working. Uh, usually it just says hold F to repair. Uh, we'll see if I have something. Yeah. Doesn't seem like I have something that needs repair. Okay. Anyway, so that is, uh, that's base defense, and as I said, that's base defense. Now, if you're not playing with raids, none of that matters. You can just go ahead and build your base uh, wherever you wish, and that would be perfectly fine. <clears throat> now, like I said. I do recommend at least two bases, one mainly for um, food, as you can see this is a food base, and then I have one set up for metal. Uh, reason being, and the metal base actually became my main base, We the third base we have was the first base and there's everything's just there. Uh, problem being, if you have metal and you have food and you have everything then it really gets a bit complicated uh, to manage. Uh, if you, uh, let's head over to the other base real quick, because the next is going to be pretty much chest locations. Now, here, 
there's not really a, ne a necessity for a specific chest. I have the fridge over there where a lot of my um, the food resources go. I have a dump chest because uh, some of the creatures I have have... Uh, when they're off, they do like mining the trees and such. So I just give them... It's I, I call it a dump chest. It's just a chest where you do not care about any type of... You don't care about anything. Everything just goes into it. Um, then finally... If we head over to the other base, uh, this is going to be laggy, so I do apologize. I did turn down my draw distance. Hopefully for... Okay, that worked decently well. I forgot it's nighttime. The other thing is that you need to keep in mind is chest location. So, as you can see, I have a bunch of stone and I have a bunch of wood. So, in this chest, I have this chest so that when I collect the stone and wood and I become overcumbered, encumbered, I can just... If you... Get the pixels just right there. You have a choir and... Uh, this one's a bit weird now. But usually you can stand in between both of them and... Access both of them. Let's see if I can access the wood. I'm not going to be over encumbered by the wood, but... Anyway, you get the point. Um, that is a terrible, uh, that's a terrible way of showing you, but it is uh, one of the ways that you can do. The other thing you can do is if you have, uh, if you need wood and you don't have a setup that's properly mining wood yet, you could always mine up wood and then just go ahead and drop it on the ground. Now, if you have uh, creatures with transporting, they're they will run over here, pick it up, and go put it in a chest. You don't uh, as you can see, there you go. So she just came by, picked it up, and she's going to go ahead and put it in one of the chests around the area. That's the one thing. Don't try and sort. Sorting is a mistake. Unless you're manually going to take things, take them out, putting them back in... You're not gonna you're not gonna be sorting anything uh, in this game. It's a bit disappointing. I hope they do fix it because I do like uh, being neatly sorted, but uh, it's not the worst. So you have things like the flaming cauldron, which um, when it is placed, flaming pals have an increased um, efficiency. Now you have a few. This is water uh, the water fountains for watering pals. I have a flaming cauldron. Uh, over there for the smelters, and I have a snowman for chilling. There's a bunch that you can place down for uh, the efficiency of your pals. Uh. Oh yes, Oh, as I mentioned, over being overweight, you could just drop things. The other thing you can do is, if you are high enough level, you, have a gr a grapp you get grappling hooks. So if you're overweight, you can use the grappling hook, although the grappling hooks are somewhat weird in terms of how they function they don't always function as you would expect so you can't lock onto that and you could the, the range is weird but if you get to a point you could just access the thing and then grapple gun back over to a chest although now i would be stuck if it was over cumbered so it's not ideal i would say probably managing it carefully is a way to do it then Another thing, sorting chests, or for your inventory, if you have something in your inventory, and this uh, is said down here, is if you can hit R and quick stack uh, everything from your inventory into their respective storage, if you already have them uh, in a storage container. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's... <coughs> That is base building, pal, uh, and raids. Now, the other big thing in the game is going to be pals. Now, the way taming works is it actually gets very intricate. The first thing is that you're going to need is our pal balls, which um, the basic pal spheres are going to be the first step you're going to need to take the best way to get them 
is to build a ranch and to get Vixie's. Now, Vixie's passive skill is dig here. Dig here just says they're going to dig up uh, items from the ground. And uh, as they dig up, they will dig up arrows, balls, and I think gold. Uh, so you can just, if you can get a couple of uh, four Vixies, it's four creatures per, yeah, it's four creatures per ranch. So if you can get four Vixies, you can um, do, go ahead, do it that way. And to get your uh, first Pokeballs. Some other important, <coughs> sorry, I'm just looking over at my list. <coughs> Some other important pals that is useful, especially early game, is your Kativas. Uh, they give you a 50 weight buff, so they'll just add 50% of your weight, uh, to 50, uh, the number 50 to your weight, uh, as many as you have, so you can have a total of 250 extra weight. Uh, the other, the next one is the King Packer, which I think he adds 100 to your weight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you can tame a bunch of King Packers if you can. Um, for base building specifically, or for base specifically, you'll see I have a bunch of Peter Quills, or Robin Quills, not Peter Quills. Uh, the reason being for Robin Quills is they are arguably the best at um multiple things so you have planting they have level two handworking so they can cover everything so i like having four of them in a base just in case uh furnace smelting is going to be kindling uh there's many different kindlers i have these uh r soxes in this base i have a i have a a flyer in the other base that's currently making uh, food. But you're going to need to go through pals as you uh, as you see them, as you capture them, uh, to determine which is based. Now, if you want to find a pal, the best way to do that is if you hit tab and you go to your pal deck. If you see there is a status and habitat up here. So you just want to click on a pal and click on habitat and it'll whether you've unlocked the location or not as long as you've encountered them it'll show you exactly where they are in this case as an example uh i i found grubfin ignis's but as you can see i have no data on it because i haven't captured it yet however since i saw it flying around i know they can spawn over there if i go to the habitat tab the only things that do not have uh, known habitats is going is naturally going to be your bosses. So that's going to be exploration and world bosses are your circles. There. There. Uh. <clears throat> Other things in taming to keep in mind. So you have your Pokeball. Or you have your power, your pal spheres, as they call it. You have different levels. You'll be going through them up to uh, legendary. I don't have any legendaries. I only have up to ultra. Um, the way actually damaging and your capture rates work is it works based on level, or the level of you and the level of the thing you are trying to capture. So, if it is substantially lower level than you. Uh, your capture rate is going to be better. If it is substantially higher than you, your capture rate is going to be marginally worse. Now, the other thing that does influence it is if it is a boss. So over here is a King Packer. Hmm. Where is he? There he is. So there's a King Packer, a world boss. And as you can see, if we hold a basic pal sphere, that's a 0.08%. Uh, naturally, as you go up through the levels to a Ultra Pal Sphere, it's 37%. Now, this would be a lot lower if I was closer to his level, but I'm, uh, I'm level 40, so I'm almost double his level. The other thing... Okay. He is now... Oh, he's not angry at me. But the other thing that does... That is... Uh, noticeable that influences your thing is if they have noticed you or not if you hold a pal ball you'll see there is a back bonus now in this case i'm naturally going to catch him because that's the baseball 
but back bonus of 43%. As soon as they realize, oh, there's the difference in levels. So a level 3 nets me 43% cap chance and a level 6 nets me 30. So it's going to depend on that. Now, these guys are running away from me. I wanted to show this. If you are if you are in front of them and they know you okay now he's low i didn't think that through but the rate is also going to be a lot lower if it's not uh if you're not back capping them deal with you real quick so the other thing that does improve rate is going to be oh this i should be able to show you here so capture rate 0.8% and if we get back cap bonus where are you it's not going to go up there you go it goes from 0.8 to 2% uh just based on because i have it back that's with a basic pal sphere the other thing now if we're doing in the front as you can see it's 0.8 if you poison something if you poison it shock it fi uh, do fire damage to it or freeze it it's um it's capture rate does go up a bit so if we go ahead and i have a poison crossbow that is not equipped where is it there we go so if we go ahead and poison this guy so two percent it's one it's 0 0.8 percent uh capture rate if we go ahead and poison him there you go it's a 0 0.1 now it's not that big of a it's not that big of an improvement but it does every little bit helps and as you will this guy down lower naturally he's going to become more susceptible to being captured and yeah ha using a higher uh, a higher tier sphere is also going to net you a better chance uh the other thing and the only other way that i know of to increase your chances of capturing is effigy bonuses now as you've probably seen flying around or running around uh there's all these little green effigies that looks like the life life marks uh these things the yeah the life monk effigies now if you have an amount of them you can either build you can build one of these statues uh i'm just close to this one you can build one of these statues you can go ahead and say enhance your player stats and sacrifice it to here i'm not sure how big a bonus this is truly but i'm on level five it goes up to 10 so realistically i could double my chances there if i actually put in the energy and uh get all the effigies on the map oh is that i believe that is all another thing the next thing that i want to talk about or just really quickly touch on because it's not really something to talk about on is uh ex extensively extensively my brain's not working is your um environmental your environmental armor and your environmental armor or different environments that you uh, are going to inter experience. Uh, okay, so as you know, as you can see, in the bottom left, can I show this? Alt tab over here. As you can see over there, what is a um? Excuse me. There's a little gauge that says how resistant I am to what. Now I have cold resistance armor. So, being cold resistant increases the amount of heat damage I take. And you'll see... Okay, that's the first thing. So, being cold resistant increases the amount of heat that you take. Being heat resistant increases the amount of cold you take. So, if you have heat resistant armor on and it's nighttime, you're probably going to start taking damage. So, I would advise crafting the heat resistant and the cold resistant variant of armor and carrying both those on you the armor the defense value and the health value is exactly the same as your 
uh, normal default uh, of the variants. So of this is uh, this is just refined metal armor. Uh, this is pal metal armor. But the pal metal armor is basically the same, or is the exact same depending on whether you have cold resistant, heat resistant, or the default. So I would recommend don't waste resources on the normal. Just wait a little bit and craft up a cold resistant and heat resistant set. The other thing that you can do is in certain areas that do become very hot, you may need a um, the thermal accessory. Now, you have one for uh, cold, as you saw there, and you have one for heat. I'm not quite sure if I have a red one. No, I have another cold one. Uh, I did drop one, but like I said, this is my friend's character, and it's on my character, but my character is lost because we transferred the world. Regardless, you have the exact same type of shirt. It's just red. Uh, it raises uh, heat resistance a bit. Now, the other thing that does influence your heat resistance is if we are to... Uh, if we're to fast travel to, say, the lava zone, which is going to be very hot, uh, you'll see I pretty much instantly start losing health because I have the cold armor on. If you have a frost creature in the heat, you can mount him, and as you can see, my bar is slowly raising. However, this is a very hot place, but it gets the point down. If I'm off of my frost creature, the bar instantly goes into the max. If I'm on a frost creature, it's there, and then, uh, yeah. Or you could just really switch to your... Um, heat resistance armor if you have but if you don't have heat resistance armor and you want to go into a place like say the desert that is not a volcano uh riding an ice pal or having an ice pal out next to you uh is also going to be a way that you can go in without really um negatively affecting uh yourself now the thing is the reason i'm very negatively affected here is because uh as i said the cold armor uh gives me more heat than i would if I was to just say take off the heat armor. Oh no. If I was to just have base on I guess. But. Yeah. Regardless. You can just ride a frost mount. In heated areas for an extra bonus in coolness. Or you could ride a uh, fire mount in the cold areas. For a additional boost in that. Now. We talked pals. We talked pokeballs. Or pal balls, pal spheres. I'm. I call them pokeballs. Please do forgive me. The other thing that we need to talk about is resources, and that we did talk about is um, your metal base, or as I said, metal base. Now, in this base, it's purely basically smelting, and as you can see, I have all my advanced machinery here. Um, I have the turtles, which is level the dig toys, which is level three mining. They're mining stone, and uh, it's not here, but there does spawn, I think, five metal nodes here. Building a base uh, close to metal nodes for a metal base is, uh, like I said, I do recommend that. However, you are also going to need some other... Why are you all the way out here? Anyway, you are going to need some other variants of... Um, you're going to need some other resources, such as, say, star metal and things as such. A good way to get resources if you have your king packers or your cats is you can always just go into a lower level dungeon. These are usually full full of, um, at the very least, your um, the blue stuff. I don't quite remember what it's called now. Uh, your pal... What, your pal metal or the pal pallium pallium uh there's usually pallium in your there's also some um creatures that you might not find uh until later so just running a dungeon may be a good way to discover the locations of some creatures because like i said you can just go to their uh once you've seen them once you can go to that tab but you can see here's pallium there is your normal metal and there is um sulfur which is used for gunpowder later as well as in some to some extent 
uh, sometimes you have a uh, coal that does appear here. Now, if you're high enough level, uh, this really isn't a challenge. Um, yeah, if you especially have guns and ammo, or even just a high level creature, it truly goes very easy. Now, in a dungeon, tip since we are here, normally always you'll get to a crossroads like this. The crossroads with the water is almost, almost always, it's not always, but almost always leads to the boss. So if you want to know which way to go that's not towards the boss, just go opposite. If you do want to go to the boss, um, you could just follow the crossroads with the water. And you should get there. Uh, that. Now, <clears throat> another th way that you can get resources since we're here is actually taming a pal. So if you are in exchange, I have resource base here. If you were to kill a pal and gather the resources, you'll see there is three venom glands. However, if I decided to catch a pal, there's three metal glands and... Okay, I dropped this boy. Why didn't that drop me more? I have no idea what's happening here. Anyway, usually you drop more resources from capturing them. And you can also always... Uh, if you do get to the point where you have too many pals, like you saw there, I just dropped that one, meaning my pal box is full. Uh, you can use the butcher's knife. That you find in your technology tab. Uh, it's not that far. There, the meat cleaver. Uh, you can use the meat cleaver to actually butcher down pals, which is a bit brutal, uh, but you can use that for the additional resources, as I was uh, talking about. Uh, dungeon. Dungeons always have a. This wasn't in the. This isn't in the script. But dungeons always have a boss at the end, even if it's a low level boss. In this case, I don't particularly care a lot about the boss, so I'm just gonna do that so that we can actually exit. But you can always come in here and tame uh, the boss variant of a certain creature, because each thing is going to have something different. Uh, at the end of a dungeon, you get two chests. Uh, these chests are usually where I get most of my um, my dragon fruit and as well as my schematics, as well as the accessories. Now, here I didn't get any accessories, but they do a lot of the time uh, drop accessories. That is... Now, that was the... That is your way of... Um, really, that's the best way of running resources. If you don't want to go all, if you don't know where to find resources, or if you don't want to run all the way to the resource areas that you get there. Next thing is leveling. Now, the first step in leveling, and probably the easiest step in the beginning, is capturing 10 pals. The first pal you capture is going to give you a lot of, is going to give you a decent amount of XP, and you will get a decent chunk of XP up until the. Sorry? Up until the point you've tamed 10 pals. After you've tamed the 10 pals, you will no longer uh, be gaining addi addi a, the additional XP boost. You'll be just be gaining base XP. The other way is of taming, if you don't know where it is, because in some cases, there is certain uh, creatures that cannot be found. Uh, you can't find them until you fly around a lot uh the way the best way to uh get those creatures is in two ways one is you follow the smoke that smoke pillar is a bit deceiving because that is just a normal village but here's a smoke pillar this is a syndicate camp that one over there is a syndicate camp flying around you'll find smoke pillars and in the smoke pillars in the center you will find um, creatures. And flying around, sometimes you'll just find shinies. Which I'm not even gonna bother catching because my, my, um, inventory's full. But you will find your random cages in the middle of your, uh, the syndicate camps. 
and you can just go ahead and release them and they will be added to directly to your um they're added directly to your pal station as long as you have them in this case he just drops on the ground there uh since we're here i might as well show you this uh at the here is a uh a little merchant civilization here there are three that i know of uh there's one here one in the desert and one um in the volcano area you can always come here you will find a merchant uh, over there you'll find the base merchant and in here you will find a pal merchant now if you've tamed your 10 pals and you know you're no longer going to use them you can come to the pal merchant and hit sell and you will then be able to gather some money for um the pals that you have now the pals that you do have are labeled uh are going to be filtered in the same way that they are in your pal box so if you filter by level or by uh whichever which way you decide to filter there um that's the way it's going to appear here go ahead and sell them you'll get gold and then you can talk to this guy and he will sometimes if you do hit buy he'll sometimes have pals that you do not have so if you do not have a univolt you could purchase a chair uh same with a daydream or whichever one he doesn't usually sell good pals um the way to find some of the best pals is there are a few black market um there are a few black market markets uh, across the map. Now, knowing where to go really helps. Uh, I know where three of them are just off the top of my head. I will be linking a uh, a map, an interactive map for the game in the description. So if you if you want to use it, you can go ahead. It'll just show you where everything is. Um, but in the these abandoned mine shafts over here we are going to find a black market now or a black market tier now he sells illegal um pals although i don't really find the distinct the distinction between illegal or legal in the game it's just he sells uh some he usually sells some more rare pals you could say so in this case he's just straight up selling uh a king packer it's not the boss variant of the king packer but it's a king packer which uh, can only be found on one of the outer islands uh same with this guy he's actually relatively rare so you can just go ahead and purchase uh one of each if you have enough money or just purchase one uh if you need one to finish your bonus of 10. dungeons as i said another very good way of uh resources it's also a very good way of leveling capturing all the pals in there giving your 10 bonus there uh as such then we have finally we have bossing now bossing you get a bonus if we look at the map you'll see i have a check mark on some of the bosses now this just means it i have defeated them at least once now as you can see catris doesn't have a check so i could I'm already max level, but I could get bonus XP for defeating them the first time. You do get a relatively big junk, uh, chunk of XP for uh, taming them or defeating them the first time. As I said, taming almost always better than defeating. Uh, in, I think, almost all cases. Unless sometimes two uh, mammoth, mammoth sets are fighting if you're low level and you get and one of them gets low you can snipe the kill and get some bonus xp that way but that's not really going to happen a lot and it's also not a very reliable way of leveling <coughs> when you get into bossing you'll realize that it's not as easy as determined so this is a bit backwards but the first way the best ways of bossing is going to be uh how your damage is applied and the level differences like i said same as capturing uh if a boss is substantially higher level than you you're going to be doing a lot lower damage to him if he's lower level than you 
is going to be uh you're going to be dealing more damage to him now in a case of where am i heading i'm just heading this way in a case of uh damage if you're fighting with pals now having fighting on top of a pal like say the the frost alien and fighting on him i'm not dealing any damage because i'm using his abilities you can if you need to min max it to a point where you might need to it may be better for you to just leave your uh pal out and fight with the weapons you have so yeah like i said you it might be you might be better off just fighting off of your pals and shooting alongside them instead of having fighting on top of them although you are a lot less survivable now this guy i'm not particularly worried about he's level 38 so he is a bit high level but it doesn't really matter i could just run away the other way is if you decide to fight on pals understanding the synergy between different elements what's strong what's weak best way to do that is going to go ahead and hit escape go down to journals or no sorry not journals the survival guide scrolling pretty much all the way down you'll see there is a elemental an elements page giving you a nice diagram of what's strong against what so fire strong against grass uh dragon strong against that dark strong against neutral uh neutral is just there's no real thing he's it's strong against uh but it's weak against dark so uh just understanding this map uh is going to help you out a lot now if you happen to be lower level which i am not a uh, lower level but if you happen to be low level you may deal one damage as an initial hit to an enemy i'm not sure if this is a bug i'm not sure but if you have poison or fire you can't sadly can't apply multiple ticks but poison a poison damage tick is going to be different depending on the uh synergy or the uh like the type of creature you're doing so plant type has a different damage tick than frost type fire has different damage ticks i'm not sure why or how that is determined but if you do shoot with a frost tick or with um poison that 20 damage tick is going to be the exact same at level one then it is going to be on level 40 where i am at now so if you do want to boss but you're not the right level to boss you can always just kite him and fight uh with your poison damage or in this case actually fighting with fire damage would probably have been better because fire uh the he's a plant based creature and yes plants is weak against fire now poison damage and fire damage is usually a bit weird sometimes it doesn't apply there it did apply uh we'll finish this guy off real quick now i don't think i have oh yes if you don't have a poison crossbow um deploying something that has poison so for instance the tombat usually has a poison attack um deploying something that has poison may deal poison damage there you go and there is a poison damage tick that way so that's another way you can um apply poison if you wish to the other thing is bosses aren't really that threatening they usually telegraph their attacks pretty good so just hitting control to dodge them is a decent way of doing it uh another thing you can do is if you see a big attack coming you could um just pull back your pal if you don't want him to take uh it to take additional damage if you are going to use pals to fight you may need to level them up but even having them at max level may not always be enough there is three ways to improve your pals or yeah i guess you could say it's three ways the first is going to be with pal souls at a pal statue if you have enough 
you'll see that you can in fact increase their damage values their work speed um their defense <clears throat> i have a statue over here that i'll show you guys that but that's going to be one way of doing it's going to be one way of improving that is going to be at one of these statues like i said the church had one this also has one you can go ahead and hit v and then you can click on a pal and you'll see this one is max so it's getting 30 percent additional health damage defense and work speed in this case it's going to be better at cooling i don't really know if that matters um but if you wanted to you could level any pal up with basic pal souls then it's going to go to the purple and then it's going to go to gold uh you can get them up to 30 percent additional damage the other way is going to be through this thing now the thing is this guy is you need to boss to unlock it in your technologies tab you have ancient technology and some ancient technology is going to require ancient civilization parts Ancient civilization parts is gotten by killing bosses or capturing them. And um, the ancient technology points is also gotten through killing bosses. So bossing is the way you unlock most of this part of the thing. So it's the PAL condenser. Now, I haven't gotten into this an excessive amount because it takes a lot. Now, the first PAL doesn't really take that much it's four pals that you can use to upgrade it so if you get a pal say a lucky pal it might be a nice idea to um level level a lucky pal up or if you have a king packer and you have other king packers so you have a boss creature or a boss variant of a creature i don't think i do i have something that i can show that not? i do so if i have i have a boss nightwing uh you can tell by the skull I can go ahead and merge four Nightwings into him. And he is going to be increased, as you can see. He's going to get a little bit picked, better max health, bit better attack, bit better defense. And then he's going to uh, get Travel Companion uh, level 2. Now, Travel Companion is the, uh, the passive talent of um, the passive talent that the Nightwing has which I am not familiar with. It can be written as a flying mount. So I'm not sure what level two would do, but that is the other way you can get them stronger. The final way to get your pal stronger is going to be with breeding. Now, breeding is mainly why I do recommended the uh, food farm because cakes are expensive. Um, I have a cooking station here, so I can show you. You're going to need a cake to tame them. Now, cake can be crafted anywhere, or um, I don't think cake can be crafted on the campfire. It can't. You need a cooking pot minimum to craft a cake. Uh, having cake requires a bunch of stuff. So milk you can get from cows, be, uh, cows being in the, uh, the, the ranch eggs for the chicks and then honey for the bee not the bee queen but the other bees of red berries from the red berry farm flower you get from a wheat farm running them through a um running them through a where is it production running it through a mill so a mill relatively inexpensive so that's there now, in breeding, to breed, you will need a breeding pen. And then you will need to deploy the two pals that you want, as well as a cake. Now, you're going to add cake to this. And if you first deploy your pals, uh, they're going to be running around. So you're just going to run up to them, hold, uh, press F to pick them up, and throw them in here. And then over time, uh, it's going to um over time it's going they're going to breed in this case they already bred the way that the stat transfers work and then you can see the vixie is doing its thing over here the male vixie doing gold coins and spheres now as this guy's running around just gonna hit f to lift him up run over to your breeding farm 
and chuck him in. And there you go. If you have cake in, they'll start breeding. And uh, after the breeding time, you will have uh, eggs. Now, I got eggs uh, in preparation for this because I was hoping to show this. I did breed them once. This is what came out. So it was a lucky, it was a lucky breed, but the gold stats do transfer over um, or have a very good chance of transferring over from mother and father to child. Uh, breeding the same creatures together will net you the same creature. Breeding different creatures together may net you something else. Uh, if you don't want to, if you don't want to uh, experiment and you just want to know what to breed with what to get what combination. I'm going to be linking a spreadsheet as well in the description, which uh, someone did all the work, literally bred everything and says what nets nothing, what nets random, what nets uh, something specific. So I do respect that uh, very nicely. Now, there are three different types of um, talents. You have your red talents, which is always a negative. In this case, it's 30% work speed. So... We do not want this one doing uh, the gathering or farming that it is capable of because it's going to work very slow. You have your normal, um, your normal gray skills, and then you have your gold skills. Now they do come in different tiers. That is determined by the arrows that are on their sides. Now, runner is a tier two gold. Uh, ferocious is a tier three. You can get, uh, say, I think Vanguard is increased to player attack. Um, is there something diet lover is not what I need? Uh, point being lucky, for instance, is work speed and attack. You can get lucky and you can get ferocious on the same creature. I, no, wait, I don't actually know if you can get lucky because lucky is exclusive to shiny belts. Scratch that. You can get the same, say, type of bonus to it. So if you, you can get realistically three. Uh, three or four attack bonuses. I think there are four different attack bonuses, but the one is the Vanguard, which is on um, player. It's going to be rare for you to do that, but you can. Uh, so you find the skills that you want together, you throw them into the breeding pin, and then they will net you eggs. Now, I have these three eggs. That is the uh, combination of those two. I don't have incubation time. Just go ahead, hold F, and it will appear. Over there, you can see I got uh, Runner, Ferocious, and Cheeky. So that is two eggs that I got um, the gold skill transfer out of. Let's see if we can get something that doesn't transfer both. Uh, that is just Runner and Ferocious. That's actually very good because Runner and Ferocious, that means there's, um, a, there is no additional gray skill that is going to want to transfer in. It's going to be an RNG if a, a gray skill does... Uh, does appear so getting a creature that has only the stat that you want to transfer is a very good idea and we'll do this one in some cases your thing might fail completely there we go we got and a veil of darkness so we didn't get um the we didn't get the runner now it's not the biggest problem sometimes you could just get a creature that breeds into no skill at all uh, or you can get something that gr breeds into a red skill, or even four red skills, if you are happen to be that unlucky. Uh, but breeding and getting everything together is... I don't bother, I don't bother. Uh, then again, we are playing on normal, we're not playing on easy. Uh, but that is all there is to really bossing and leveling. Uh, the other thing is, if you want to... Get into this. Like I said, you could level your boss. You can level a boss variant creature with the basic variant of creatures. Uh, so, yeah, if you wanted to level the boss. Thank you. My dad brought me coffee. So, if you are going to level a boss variant creature with a basic variant, you can. Although, this does get exponentially more expensive. So, if we level this guy with four... Uh, you'll see that he now is a one star if you level now you need 16 of the same creature type to do it after 16 you need 32 after 32 you need 64 um yeah 
So this is very, very end game activity. But that is honestly all I really have. Uh, I know that was a lot of information. I hope it does help. Uh, if it did help you, please be sure to uh, leave me a like, hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any other videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.